Talk Football with Comcast Cable's Game of the Week. not won until all the cards have been laid down and tonight we have two major players that plan on laying it all down tonight and lay it down they will mark morrison along with terry ellsbury coming to you from murphy stadium where the atmosphere is electric terry it's a great atmosphere tonight mark it's something else up here we've got uh, quite possibly the largest crowd ever to see a high school football game in the city of gadsden i know uh, you and i live in birmingham and to talk all week even in birmingham has been about this game and uh, certainly we can see why. In these two teams, with Lee, we have the defending 6A state champs, and of course, Gadsden is the defending 5A state champs. Gadsden comes in with an 18-game winning streak, the longest in the state. Lee comes in with a 14-game winning streak, second longest in the state. We expect the game to certainly live up to this atmosphere. You talk about all the publicity, and you're right. That is all we heard. A lot of articles have been written on it. But let's talk a little bit about the stakes of this card game, so to speak. Are the stakes really that high tonight? Well, I think for Lee, they are. As you mentioned, Lee comes in ranked number one in the nation. They cannot afford a loss. I mean, the, with the number one ranking comes all the publicity and everything. They cannot afford a loss. It's not an area game for either game. Therefore, Gadsden, in my opinion, has nothing to lose and everything to gain. If they lose, it's not an area game. It's not going to knock them out of the state. In essence, they're the underdog. Gaston has everything to gain, nothing to lose. Let's peek into the hands of these two major players. First, the Lee Generals. I guess if we had to draw some kind of collusion between the two, we'd say that they're a team that is stacked and loaded, maybe four of a kind they have. Absolutely. They start on offense with their great tailback, Frederick Beasley, who... Uh, like Jimmy Williams, they are interchangeable probably as the two best running backs in the state of Alabama. Beasley has uh, over 300 yards already this year, and that's playing only half the games. So this young man's averaging over seven yards a carry, certainly someone to watch on the offensive side of the ball. On the defensive side of the ball, they counter with Roderick Hughes, who's a major college prospect at the defensive end position. He, along with Gadsden's Marcellus Mostella, are the two top-rated defensive end prospects. He's a big, big young man, Martin. He's going to create havoc for Gadsden. He scared me when I walked by a while ago. Of course, on the Gadsden side of the ball, they have a full house of their own. They do. We mentioned Jimmy Williams just a while ago. Of course, Jimmy already in just four games has over 740 yards. So he's on the pace to equal as he, what he did last year, over 1,900 yards. Also, the big man who may play an important role tonight, number 12, Andy Swafford. And Andy is just a jack-of-all-trades for guests, and he does the punting. He's a leader in that defensive secondary. Just a good man to have on your ball club. Also, we mentioned Marcellus Mostella. 
fine defensive end from Gadsden. He's been dominating all year long. And Mark, we were talking a while ago with a writer from the Birmingham News, and he mentioned that there, quite possibly, there are over 10 Division I major college prospects on this field tonight. Truly a treat for us to watch Absolutely. tonight. All the cards have been dealt, and no one's going to fold tonight. They're fixing to lay them all out, and we're not going to miss it. Don't you miss it. Stay right there. We'll be right back. As you can see, there is no room in the end, so to speak. This crowd has packed this stadium full already. Everyone expecting a great game tonight. A capacity of 12,000 expected, and I think that we're going to see it tonight. We're here with head coach Vince DeLorenza, and coach, we appreciate you coming by at a busy time like this before a big game. Bunch of things to talk about. Let me first ask you a little bit about the schedule. Of course, you could bring up the fact uh, for a homecoming opponent, you picked a tough one. But the fact of scheduling anyway and how this game occurred, you've only got eight games. Is it the fact that these two teams are so good they have to travel so far sometimes to, to play great opponents like you're having to do? Well, I think it's a result of, of our realignment in, uh, in the state where you go to a three or four team area rather than a seven or eight team region. I think that's the basic problem. Um, and then the more successful teams uh, have a hard time getting games. And that's one reason why, you know, Lee, of course, is the third largest high school in the state. So you would imagine they'd have a tough time getting games, but not Gadsden High School. We're in the middle of the 5A as far as numbers go. So, um, you know, that is, yes, it's a problem getting games. And that's why we're playing Lee, I assure you. It's because we only had six games before I talked to Coach McCracken. And all the papers, all the radio shows, they seem to be talking about this game, pointing into it all year. Are the stakes really that high, though, tonight? Well, as far as who makes it to the playoffs, no. Um, but as far as playing against the number one football team in the country, uh, playing in front of a great crowd, um, measuring yourself against the best, Mark. You know, I've talked to you about this many times. You know, we're if you're going to be a great football team, then you've got to play great football teams to see how you measure up. Uh, I've been lucky. We've done a pretty good job of measuring up to about everybody we've played. But because our schedule is getting tougher and tougher and tougher, you know, we're going to meet teams that are going to be better than we are, and sometimes a lot better than we are. And, uh, you know, this may be one of those nights, but again, uh, my, you know, I don't have to play. I get to sit on the sideline and cheer and come up with a game plan. It's the players that I admire, the players I respect, because they have no fear. They're going to come out here and play the very best game they can, and that's a tribute to them. You've alluded to the fact that offense for Gaston has to be the key tonight. Does it uh, bother you a little bit, or does it hurt your offensive game plan, the fact that you're playing another team that runs the same type of offense? They see it every day in practice, and we've seen some variations of your offense. You've gone to the aisle a lot this year. Mm -hmm. What's your plan tonight? Well, we're going to mix up uh, the wing and the eye, um, and basically we're going to try to see what's going best for us. I felt like against Welburn that we started to move the football in the eye. We had a lot of penalties which carried us out of situations where I thought we were beginning to move the football. We had some turnovers. Um, so we, you know, we'd like to be multiple, um, and we're going to go with what we think is best based on what Lee is giving us. Well, we know you spent a lot of late nights watching films of the teams that you're preparing to play, but in watching the Lee Generals this year, you haven't seen the starters that much, have you? No, no, I tell you, it, they, um, you know, one unbelievable stat is their offense, their first offense has scored every time they've gotten the football except once. They scored a touchdown every time they've gotten the football except once. They get a three or four touchdown lead by halftime. Um, you know, that's, again, they've got a great football team, and uh, it's going to be a, a tough game. But, uh, you know, again, uh, it's the kind of game that's uh, exciting. And, Mark, I don't know what the score is going to be. I don't know what's going to happen at 11 o'clock tonight, but I do know this. We're playing a great football team. Uh, this is a game that uh, our players have dreamed about. We did what we set out to do. We're undefeated right now. Lee did what they set out to do. They're undefeated. After tonight, there will only be one undefeated team left, but that doesn't mean the season is over. We've still got our goals, which is to be in the area playoffs and to win a state championship. All of those goals are still out there no matter what happens tonight, and that's what our players know, and that's what we as coaches have tried to tell them, and, and we realize no matter how bad we may hurt or how much we may celebrate, uh, the main goals that we have for ourselves are still going to be out there after this game's over. Well, Coach, we appreciate you coming by. I know you're busy. Thanks a lot, and good luck tonight. Have thank, fun. Thank you, Mike. We're going to. Yeah. There's a man that knows how to have fun, and it's provides it through his players and we'll be back with a long-awaited kickoff right after this not having the right piece of equipment for a job isn't funny worse it wastes time money and is potentially ah! 
dangerous. But you don't have to sink a big investment into expensive specialty tools for a one-time job. Let us rent you the right tools for construction and do-it-yourself projects of all kinds, large or small, at rates that won't break your budget. See us for help, no matter how big the project. See the Alabama Contractors Equipment Professionals in your town. If you haven't been to J.C. Garcia's lately, you're in for a treat. That's because J.C. Garcia's has worked hard to improve their products to make sure you won't be disappointed. Responding to your requests, J.C. Garcia's has added new menu items. And if that isn't enough, just wait until you dig into J.C. Garcia's specialty, baby back ribs. They've got it all together for you. Now all you have to do is go to J.C. Garcia's, 1504 Rainbow Drive, Bridals by Rita is known for their beautiful bridal and formal gowns. Flowers by Rita specializes in beautiful rose arrangements, fresh cut flowers, and funeral sprays. Plus the best selection of balloons, candy, and mugs for all occasions, including over the hill items. Citywide deliveries daily to hospitals and funeral homes. Rita and Ted's newest edition, One Hour Express Photo, offers the finest quality professional photo developing at the lowest prices in town. Same day service if in by noon on professional 120 film developed, 35 millimeter black and white and color slides developed and mounted. You'll find it all on the corner of 5th and Broad in downtown Gadsden. Tuxedo Inn, your formal wear leader and wedding specialist for over 20 years. Tuxedo Inn, Gadsden and Etowah County's only complete in-stock formal wear service. Tuxedo Inn, featuring over 12,000 in-stock tuxedos with over 80 styles by famous designers like Pierre Cardin, Lord West, and After Six. Tuxedo Inn offers the groom's tuxedo rental absolutely free with five or more in the wedding party. Tuxedo Inn, 1501 Rainbow Drive, across from Days Inn. Tuxedo Inn, open nights till 8. If you've discovered that what sounds good to you is no sound at all, <laughs> discover just how much more quiet there is in the all new 1993. Toyota Corolla and discover Corolla again.
and the captains have headed to the center of the field for the toss of tonight's coin. Captains for the Tigers will be number 64, Tommy Gargas, 33, Shane Simpson, 63, Derek Sparks, and 16, Eminem Marcellus Mastello. The captains for the generals, number 36, Scott Stafford, number 39, Brent Barron, and number 61, John Mosley. Everyone has been introduced. It appears as though the Tigers will receive the ball. The only thing I didn't catch was whether uh, the Tigers won the toss and elected to receive. Our executive producer, Scott Hutchinson, says no, that the generals defer, the Tigers will receive. The lead general band strikes it up. Everyone getting ready for the big expected kickoff. And here come the Tigers. Tiger offense is going to be against this very strong lead defense. As you alluded to, it will be important for Gadsden to go out, move the ball, control the clock a little bit, keep a very potent lead offense off the field. Travis Smith is going to kick it off for the Robert E. Lee Generals. And a couple of times this year, Mr. Smith has actually put the ball through the uprights. So he is quite a fine kicker. He is 18 of 18 in extra point attempts. But only has one field goal to his credit this year. They don't have to kick many field goals. They score a lot of touchdowns. They score so many, he's gotten all for good at this point. <laughs> a lot of practice. A lot of practice. Andy Swafford back deep for the Tigers. We're set to get it underway. And we're off. It's a good high kick. He'll take Swafford back to deep in his end zone, one yard deep. And it'll be a touchback, and the Tigers will take over at their own 20 yard line. So let's set the offense for you a bit. Number 18, Chuck Robinson will do the signal calling. Number 34, Jimmy Williams. Number 12, Andy Swafford. And number 33, Shane Simpson will be the backs. Number three, Bo Hudson will be the split out. And we'll get the offensive lineman for you in one moment. Swafford in motion left. To think to sense I'm looking to get it to Williams, and they do on the screen. Up to 25, 26, 27, and close to a guess to the first down around the 30 yard line. Excellent play right off the bat from the Tigers mark. They come out, lined up Williams in a weak position. Pretty good motion against the grain. Got all the flow going the other way. Good pass to settle down the quarterback's nerves. Good gain on first down. We talked about how Gaston has not thrown a whole lot this year, but that's a good play to get that quarterback's confidence up. Very first play of the game in a big game like this. Gaston did pick up the first down. We'll call it first and 10 at their own 30. Wing T formation. Here comes Williams. The gives to Williams right at center. He's smothered. Pierce is host the nose guard, Travis Smith for the Generals, making the stop. We talked about earlier that both of these teams are very similar in offense. Both of these teams line up in the wing tee. And 
doing so, both defenses have had a lot of practice against this offense. So this is not something that they're seeing for the first time. They can see this every day in practice. Gaston electing to go again with the wing T formation. Bo Hudson split out left, and Swafford is in motion this way. Here comes the option. There's the pitch to Swafford, not a whole lot of room. And he is nailed down around the 26-yard line. The Tigers going to lose at least one more. Excellent pursuit that time by number 36. Scott Stafford for lead. Stafford's their leading tackler coming into this game, and we certainly saw why right there. He closed that gap mighty quickly. Lee's going to take a timeout, an early timeout, with 10.25 left. We'll be right back. After a big gain on first down for the Tigers to start the game off, two consecutive two-yard losses. Tigers looking at third and 14. Swafford's in motion to the right. That gives to Williams back across the left side. And again, no room to go. Williams brought down for no game. Scott Stafford once again for the general stepping up and filling that hole there. It looked like Jimmy might have a little daylight. But Stafford, Stafford scraped off, stepped up. We see why this young man has 41 tackles coming into this game already. Andy Swafford set to punch it away to Mason Miller, number 20, or number 13, Shane Norton. Good punt by Swafford. Picked up there by Shane Norton, and not much gain on the play, but it's going to be good field position for the Lee Generals. Interior shows that key on that first possession of the game. If your defense is strong, you can give your offense the ball in good position. Field yeah, position will play an important part tonight, Mark, along with the kicking game. Good punt and good coverage that time by the Tigers. Here are the generals in a veer formation. Option to the right. Number seven, Jeff Basmore with the keeper that time, picks up about four on the play. Good pursuit that time by the Tiger defense. A little variation in what the generals are usually run on offense. They come out, run a variation of the option back time, a fear look. Quarterback Kevin, of course, he is their second leading rusher coming into this game on the year. Jeff Basmore ran a lot of running back last year. There's the give to his tailback. Mason Miller, a good gain up to the 45-45 and brought down at the 30-yard line. Generals busting it wide open on the simple give off tackle left. The game scoring saving tackle by the Tigers. 8.41, clock ticking here in the first quarter early. The Generals are on the move. Link T formation. Beasley's in motion to the right. He was not the jump, the tight end jump. It's a freebie and it ball falls incomplete. And it is going to back the Generals up. Let's set the offense for you on the general side of the ball. You'll see a host of running backs. Number 20, Mason Miller. 23, Fred Beasley, and 27, Samuel Murray is in there right now. You'll also see 22, Buddy Davis, a little later on. All the talk has been about Beasley, but Samuel Murray had a great year last year as well. 30, Mark, he had over 100 yards last year. Right up the middle, he turns for about six or seven yards right up the gut of the Tiger defense. And that will bring up a second and eight for the Generals. Good blocking up front that time by number 78, Brian Hill, for the Generals from Montgomery. They're not a huge team up front. They have good mobility and good quickness. They do a good job coming off the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
strong formation left. Now they switch around to the rear formation. Strong was right. There's the give off right tackle. And he is stuffed. Samuel Murray is stuffed after about a three yard game for the Generals. Great pursuit that time by number 42, Terrence Taylor for the Tigers. Big play here on third down, Mark, early in this ball game. Third and two at the Tiger 22-yard line. We mentioned that the Generals have a great kicker, but he hasn't kicked a whole lot this year. It'll be Beasley and Murray in the backfield make that Buddy Davis. Buddy Davis moves, and then back him up five more. earlier that this is quite possibly the largest crowd ever to see a ball game here at Murphy Stadium. The crowd noise may be playing a part in two of these early illegal procedure penalties. Very rare the crowd noise will be in effect in a high school football game, but this may be one game where that comes into play. The generals have moved the ball consistently so far tonight on the ground. It'll be interesting to see if they do it. It'll be a full formation left. There's the option left. It gives to Beasley. And Marcellus takes him down. The Eminem man introduces himself to Mr. Beasley. Two of the best in the state of Alabama right there. One of the best running backs in Frederick Beasley. And unquestionably, the top defensive end prospect in the state, Marcellus Mostella, and you just showed us why right there. Boy, Eminem showed off the of speed that time. Came up from behind Mr. Beasley and brought him down for no gain. Big stop for the Tigers. Chad Blake is going to put it down for the Generals. Trying to pick up an early three here, an early lead. Placed down at the 34 yard line, the kick is up, and it's going to be left, and it's no good. And the Tigers have held with 558 left to go in the first quarter. We still have a 0 to 0 score. Etowah Quality of Life Council is here for you with the newly developed maternal and child health program. In many cases of unplanned pregnancies, expectant mothers have to be mentally as well as physically prepared for the task of parenting. The maternal and child program is designed to meet these needs for low-income women through prenatal care, nutritional counseling, WIC program, and transportation to one of our three clinics. If you have need of our services, visit one of our clinics or call Etowah Quality of Life Council, 546-4606 or 492 I'm Dr. Royce Jones, a chiropractic physician. If you're in pain, I encourage you to call for our free consultation. Helping people is our business. Here, there's a big, big defensive series for the Tigers that time. Sure was. It looked like Lee was going in to get points there. A couple of big penalties helped, but a good defensive stand also by the Tigers. Shane Watts is now in for the Tigers. He split wide left. Swafford's in motion. Chuck's going to look to throw it to Swafford. Under throws a little bit, and it's incomplete. Well, like Robinson was a little over anxious then. He had Andy on about an eight yard out there. He had a little pressure, but he never did quite get his feet set. When he delivered the ball, the ball fell a little bit low. And Mr. Shane Watts went back to the huddle and said, give me a little better look next time. He was open down the sideline as well. Tiger still in the wing T formation. Bo Hudson is split right. Swafford's in motion left. Here comes the option to the left. Robinson with the keeper. Now he pitches. Oh, it's intercepted. And they're going to give it to the Generals. Oh, Terry, let's take another look at that play. 
Hunt that time, the Tigers come up in their wing team formation, brought Swafford around in motion. Robinson run down the line, was going to option off the end. The end was not there, carried it on downfield as supposed to. Number two, Jeremy Brown comes up from his defensive back position, makes a great play to intercept the lateral, sets up the generals a great field position. Murray and Beasley in the backfield to give this quarterback base, was going to keep it, and he's going to go down. Number 15, D.J. Davis coming up with a big hit for the Tigers. What a great play D.J. Davis made just there. He had two lead blockers coming at him head on. He was able to get under them, come up and trip the quarterback up for little of no gain. Jeff Basmore calling the signals for the Generals. Murray and Beasley in the backfield. Again, this time it's to number 20, Mason Miller. He doesn't find any room. Well, Terry, I can't get that off my mind. That option play, really not a bad idea by Chuck Robinson. If, if he gets the ball to Swafford, nobody was ahead of Swafford on this side. You're right, Mark. You cannot fault Chuck Robinson at all. Jeremy Brown just made an outstanding play on defense. He actually played both men by himself and was able to intercept that lateral. There's the give to Murray across the inside. Number 22 make that Buddy Davis, who picks up about six on the carry. And again, it's going to bring up a fourth and four. It'll be interesting to see. And yes, they're going to bring in the kicker. Travis Smith comes in this time. They were unsuccessful with Chad Blake a minute ago. So the general is also looking to get some points on the board. The ball will be placed down at the 19 and a half yard line. A 29, we'll call it a 30 yard field goal for the Generals. Basketball will place it down. Good snap. There's the break! And the Generals are going to walk in number nine, Byron McQueen. And let's look at it again. Just an excellent call that time on the part of the Generals. They had number nine, Byron McQueen, lined up on the left block position over there. He come all the way across the formation. Passmore took the snap, just raised up, pitched him to it. He went in untouched around the right side. Big play for the Generals. Boy, and just when you thought the Tigers had another big stop defensively, the Generals put some points on the board. The extra point is good. So with 3.52 left to go in the first quarter, the Generals lead 7 to nothing. Professional Opticians, serving you since 1949. Professional Opticians offers a wide choice of frames. We also have a large selection of sunglasses in stock with ultraviolet filters and designer frames. Carrera, Bosch & Lomb, Christian Dior, and more. Professional Opticians has a lens fabricating laboratory in-house for fast, accurate service. Our technicians make sure your lenses are grounded exactly like your doctor ordered. Professional Opticians, the name speaks for itself. Six to nine months to earn your diploma from a nationally accredited college. New World College in Anniston and Gadsden trains people just like you for new and exciting careers in business computer operations, medical office assistant, and cosmetology. New World College offers day and evening classes, job placement, on-the-job training, and financial aid. Call and register now. A new career and a new life begins at New World College, Anniston and Gadsden. Hi, I'm Maurice Wright of the Whole Truth Television Broadcast here on Comcast Channel 5. We're here to remind you that beginning September 21st, this Monday, from 5 to 6 p.m., we will be coming on at that time. Instead of 6 to 7, on Tuesday, we'll be coming on from 5 to 6 p.m. each Monday evening here on Comcast Channel 5. And we pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to, unto you. And if it is, let us hear from you for the Whole Truth Broadcast Television Ministry is an outreach ministry of the United Christian Church. May God bless you as I will pray. At Hicks TV, we stand behind what we sell. We sell and service quality products, including Panasonic. 
At Hicks TV, we treat our customers with the care and respect you've come to count on. If you're looking for a television, VCR, camcorder, or satellite dish, make Hicks your first stop. We'll make sure you get the best service and Panasonic products for your money. With Hicks and Panasonic, you're the only customer. 927 Megan Boulevard, Gadsden. for the Generals. A high and short kick this time. And the Tigers have to get on it. There's a scramble for the ball. And I think the Generals got it. They do. There was a mad scramble for the ball, and it put bounce loose off Shane Smith from shoulder pads, and the Generals collected it on the 18-yard line. We talked earlier about what an important part the kicking game would play. We've seen two big plays already off the kicking game. The Mayfield go for the touchdown, then turn right around. The Tigers turn it over on the kickoff. Just cannot afford to do that against a caliber team of lead. Well, the Tigers had already turned their backs to Shane Sesson to head down and fill the block, so no one was looking for the ball. Fastmore with a quick gift up to Beasley. He's got some room looking for the end zone, and he's in there. Touchdown, General. Right up the middle, Terry. Very good evidence there. While well, that young man is going to be the most highly recruited running back in the state next year, Victor Beasley, only a junior, right up the middle, broke several tackles. The Tigers are in a deep hole here, and we're still in the first quarter. Travis Smith looks to make it 14 to nothing. There's a whistle on the play. If you think we're confused on the call, Travis Smith will kick the extra points, and Travis Smith does the kickoffs. So we'll try it again five yards deeper. Lightning has struck here early twice. Smith makes it 14 to nothing, it's true. So at 3.27, there's a timeout on the field. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Tuxedo Inn, your formal wear leader and wedding specialist for over 20 years. Tuxedo Inn, Gadsden and Etowah County's only complete in-stock formal wear service. Tuxedo Inn, featuring over 12,000 in-stock tuxedos with over 80 styles by famous designers like Pierre Cardin, Lord West, and After Six. Tuxedo Inn offers the groom's tuxedo rental absolutely free with five or more in the wedding party. Tuxedo Inn, 1501 Rainbow Drive, across from Days Inn. Tuxedo Inn, open nights till 8. If you've discovered that suddenly we could use a little more room, discover just how much more room there is in the all new 1993 Toyota Corolla and discover Corolla again. Trevor Smith gets a lot of practice at this. Third time tonight, he'll boot it away. This time it's going to go out of bounds and I'll back him up. Here we talked during the timeout, just when it appeared as though the Tigers had had a good defensive stand again. All of a sudden they find themselves down 14 to nothing. I hate to keep repeating how important the kicking game is, but. Uh, you're absolutely right. The Tigers appear to have Lee stopped, lined up for a field goal. Bam, fake field goal, and it's touchdown. They turn around, kick the ball off. The Tigers turn it over. Another quick seven. The Tigers have not shown 
much offense all year long. They've had a hard time putting points on the board, and I know they've got to be concerned being 14 down this early in the game. Of course, the Tigers dodged a bit early when it appeared as though they had a big play set up. Offensively, the ball, the pitch was really intercepted. They dodged a bullet there, and then all of a sudden they're down 14 to nothing. Wing T formation. Swafford in motion left. Robinson looking to throw, looking for Watts. Now looks for Williams across the middle. Williams has it. His forward progress will give him about three yards on the reception. Good throw and catch that time by Chuck Robinson and Jimmy Williams. It's obvious that Jimmy is drawing the main concern as well he should of the defensive unit for Lee. He no more took a half step that time after he caught it. Scott Stafford wrapped him up. Stafford and Hall, great linebacker tandem, and they lead the generals in tackles. It appears as though both of them are looking at the big number 34. There's the give to Williams. Across left tackle, a little more room that time. Picks up about four yards across the 40 up to the 42 yard line. Important third down coming up for the Tigers. It's not so much that they need to get points to this drive. They need to, we talked about field position earlier. The whole first quarter has been played down on the Tigers end of the field. They need to get a first down or two and at least get some field position back for their defense. We'll call it third and three. They're the high formation that will give us to Williams and he's not going to get it. It appears though he had a little gap there to start with. I thought he was going to pick up the first down quite easily. The generals close fast. They've shown quickness on both sides of the ball tonight. Not exactly huge on either side, but they do have good quickness coming off the ball, and they converge on the ball carrier. The Tigers right now look a little defeated as they come off the field, but they need to keep their heads up. This is a small margin of error, then the score would still be nothing to nothing and them having the ball, so they need to keep their heads up. We're a long way from home. Swafford set to kick it away. He does quickly, but it's a shank off the side of his foot. Bounces out at around the 26. They'll mark it up around the 28-yard line. So with 114, as the teams change hands, we'll be right back. Murray and Beasley, the backs, in a split formation. He gives to Murray. Make that Beasley, he bounces off. He may be off to the races. Tries to step on Swafford. Swafford brings it down somehow, all the way down to the 36-yard line of the Tigers. And he is a hawk. Another great run by number 23, Frederick Beasley. As we alluded to in the pregame, this young man has played essentially just half of the football game so far. Last week in their game, he played just the fourth, first quarter, had two runs for 84 yards. He's around 40 carries for the year, the coaches told us, and this time last year, he was around 80. That tells you the difference. There's the fake generals looking to put it in the air. Looks for Beasley and Murray, has no one, throws it away, out of bounds on the right side. Good defensive pressure that time by number 64, Tommy Gargas, and number 16, Marcellus Mostella, forcing Bassmore to put it up and overthrow his receiver. I think that shows you the generals aren't content with keeping it on the ground, even though they're up 14 points. They realize the potent offense and the potential that the Tigers do have, even though they haven't shown it a lot this year. Strong formation right. Bassmore with the keeper. All the way across the 30-yard line and down to the 28-yard line of the Tigers. Blocked once again by number 78, Brian Hill and Marcellus Mostella that enabled Mass Moore to turn that up and get good yardage on the keeper. We talked to generals, we talked about them being a wing T offense, but they have shown us a host of other formations lining up here tonight. 
Roll formation right. Right up the middle is Beasley. Oh, and he's going to walk in, it appears. Touchdown, General. Once again, Beasley is proving that one man could not bring him down. He was able to run through the initial containment at the line of scrimmage. Andy Swafford come up to meet him. Was not able to get low enough on him. He run right over him, right on into the end zone. The Generals have struck for three touchdowns here, still in the first quarter. Smith looks to make it 21 to nothing, and he does. It's good. So with three seconds left in the first quarter, the Tigers find themselves down 21 to nothing. Chad Blake's going to put it down this time. He kicks off. He's going to kick it deep to Swafford at around the five. And he fumbles it again up to the close to the 20 yard line. Looking for a little room. And all the way up to the 28 yard line. This crowd's trying to ignite the Tigers and get something going here. That's going to end it in the first quarter. The teams are going to swap sides and we'll be right back. Bridals by Rita is known for their beautiful bridal and formal gowns. Flowers by Rita specializes in beautiful rose arrangements, fresh cut flowers, and funeral sprays. Plus the best selection of balloons, candy, and mugs for all occasions, including over-the-hill items. Citywide deliveries daily to hospitals and funeral homes. Rita and Ted's newest edition, One Hour Express Photo, offers the finest quality professional photo developing at the lowest prices in town. Same day service if in by noon on professional 120 film developed, 35 millimeter black and white and color slides developed and mounted. You'll find it all on the corner of 5th and Broad in downtown Gadsden. Dr. Royce Jones, a chiropractic physician. If you're in pain, I encourage you to call for our free consultation. Helping people is our business. Six to nine months to earn your diploma from a nationally accredited college. New World College in Anniston and Gadsden trains people just like you for new and exciting careers in business computer operations, medical office assistant, and cosmetology. New World College offers day and evening classes, job placement, on-the-job training, and financial aid. Call and register now. A new career and a new life begins at New World College, Anniston and Gadsden. Not having the right piece of equipment for a job isn't funny. Worse, it wastes time, money, and is potentially dangerous. But you don't have to sink a big investment into expensive specialty tools for a one-time job. Let us rent you the right tools for construction and do-it-yourself projects of all kinds, large or small, at rates that won't break your budget. See us for help, no matter how big the project. See the Alabama Contractors Equipment Professionals in your town. finding themselves on the wrong end of a blowout here, trying to get something started. Here comes Jimmy Williams fighting forward for about five yards. You can see some determination that time by Williams. <coughs> good hard running, good offensive surge that time. For the Tigers, number 63, Derek Sparks, number 53, Andy Hart. Good explosion off the ball. Tigers have to get something going here early, finding themselves down, have to find some way to get it back up. Small margin of error can make a big difference than has in the first quarter. Williams was hit and immediately he looked down like he lost the ball. The Tigers will retain possession but the play fell to game, so they're looking at about third and a long four yards. Bo Hudson coming back in the game. Number 11, Bo Deal, now the quarterback for the Tigers, looking to get something started here. 
Tigers can ill afford another turnover down here deep in their own territory. Swelford in motion to the right. Bo Hudson's out this way. Bo Dill looking to come this way. He looks to set up the screen to Watts. And it falls incomplete. And maybe a good thing for Shane Watts that it did fall incomplete. He had a host of generals over there tracking him down. A good break for the Tigers on the rough in the passer call there. That'll give the Tigers a first down. A badly needed first down at this point in the ball game. It's going to move the ball all the way up to midfield. And that'll help the Tigers get something going here. Huge crowd on hand here. You hate to see this one get lost early. The Tigers trying to get something started here. And I believe they can. Play a talent, just a couple of small mistakes that turned into seven points each for the Generals. When you play a good team like Robert E. Lee, you can ill afford to make those kind of mistakes. Swafford left, split backfield for the Tigers. Bo Dill's the quarterback. He feels some pressure. Here they come. He's going to lose the ball now. Has to just pick it up and fall on it all the way back to the 30-yard line. A loss of 20 yards on the play. And just when it appeared the Tigers had a break, they find themselves in another hole. Good penetration that time by number 94, Travis Smith, for the Generals. He was putting pressure on Bo Deal. Bo was looking downfield and just dropped the ball very alertly, just fell on it, didn't try to pick it up and do anything with it. The linebackers lead the Lee Generals in tackles on defense. Smith is third at the nose guard position, and as a coach, that's what you like to see. Those men up front making a lot of tackles. Eye formation now for the Tigers. It'll be Sensum and Williams, the pitches to Williams. And number 21 for the Generals, Cohen Mann comes up to make the stop. Play very similar on defense that DJ Davis made while ago. Mann had a lot of interference coming his way. He was able just to submarine under him, knocked all the interference and the ball carrier down. You know, he was just really trying to turn that one up inside, and he just happened to get a piece of it. Good defensive play. Of course, that's Coach Spence McCracken's specialty, his defense. He was an outstanding linebacker at Auburn back in the late 60s, and the defense is his baby. Strong right formation for the Tigers. You can look to see them put it in the air. They don't. They give it to Sensum this time. On third and about a mile for the Tigers, he goes nowhere. The Tigers are going to have to punt it away once again. We talked earlier about the, the real importance of this game. How it doesn't play in the area factor. And the Tigers have a big game next week with the Etowah Blue Devils. So they don't need to get a whole lot of people injured here tonight, but still, down 21 to nothing, a lot of pride at stake. There is a lot of pride, as we mentioned, the defending 6A champs and the defending 5A champs, so. Swafford boots it to Miller. Mason Miller takes it at his own 30. Dodges one Tiger, and he may be off to the races. This is the 30, the 25, the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Generals! It may be brought back. Number 45, Nico Brown, complaining that he did not clip. It appears as though the official called it around the 39-yard line. And they will bring this one back. Turn, return nonetheless by number 20, Mason Miller. The Tigers essentially just overrun that football, Mark. They were all down there in good shape. They just didn't break down soon enough. Brown had him surrounded. He was able to split the gap in the middle. Without the clipping penalty, that's another six points. Let me give you a little stat about this young man. He averages 29 yards on each punt return, which is amazing. That run was no fluke. 
Well, I think that's probably another area that the generals get a lot of practice in is fielding punts from the look of their defense. Obviously, they force a lot of teams to punt to them. Beasley and Buddy Davis in for the generals. And I believe Samuel Murray jumped a little bit too soon. Got to back it up five. A lot of time people look at the punt returner as being the main man who does it all, but a lot is done, done up front to begin with that people don't ever see to set up those run backs. General's doing a fine job of holding that line and letting their punt returners have a lot of room to bring the ball back. We can tell from their kicking game that a lot of emphasis is placed on it. We've already seen a fake field goal for a touchdown, then a punt return has been brought back. There's a fake to Beasley. Bassmore looking to go up, not even going to be close. Overflows his man, number 11, Chris Mosley, out on the right side. Good coverage that time by number 15, DJ Davis. Bassmore was trying to hit his receiver there, Mosley. On an out and up, Davis would not bite on the fake. Good coverage. He just had to overthrow it. Terry, I believe it's important for the Tigers to hold the Generals here, try to get at least seven points on the board before halftime. Go in down just maybe a couple of touchdowns. Don't dig it. Don't need to dig a deeper hole here than they already have. There's a give to Murray right up the gut. A missed tackle. Two missed tackles. He's still running wild, and finally broke down at the 36-yard line. He picked up the first down for the Generals. It appears from up here that the defensive front for the Tigers on those traps there are basically just taking themselves out of the play. They're overrunning the play. That frees the running back up. He's in the secondary before anybody realizes it. As Coach Nails expressed earlier this year, that as far as the linebacking core was concerned, they were a little inexperienced back there. Basmore gets it off and completes 22. Buddy Davis felt some pressure that time by Tyrone Brasher, who came hard right up the middle. Big boys that time by Basmore to stick in there and take the leg by the defense and deliver the ball to his receiver on time for a nice game. This is not a one-dimensional Lee offense that we're looking at. Basmore, of course, last year ran a lot at backup tailback, so he can actually run the ball and throw it fairly well. Samuel Murray is corralled and dropped for a two-yard loss by a host of Tigers. And again, the Generals find themselves in another third down situation. Third and short, it's imperative that the Tigers bow up their neck right here and stop them. A lot of time left in this second quarter for them to generate something on offense. Strong formation right. It appears as though they had Beasley stop, but he wiggled out of there, picked up the first down, and he's hard to bring down all the way up to the 42-yard line of the Tigers. Oh, I thought they had him back there for at least no gain. Great effort by Beasley. I counted four tackles he broke then. There's an injured player on the field, so while we check the injury, we'll be right back. If you haven't been to J.C. Garcia's lately, you're in for a treat. That's because J.C. Garcia's has worked hard to improve their products to make sure you won't be disappointed. Responding to your requests, J.C. Garcia's has added new menu items. And if that isn't enough, just wait until you dig into J.C. Garcia's specialty, baby back ribs. They've got it all together for you. Now all you have to do is go to J.C. Garcia's, 1504 Rainbow Drive. At Hicks TV, we stand behind what we sell. We sell and service quality products, including Panasonic. At Hicks TV, we treat our customers with the care and respect you've come to count on. If you're looking for a television, VCR, camcorder, or satellite dish, make Hicks your first stop. 
We'll make sure you get the best service and Panasonic products for your money. With Hicks and Panasonic, you're the only customer. 927 Megan Boulevard, Gadsden. Etowah Quality of Life Council is here for you with the newly developed maternal and child health program. In many cases of unplanned pregnancies, expectant mothers have to be mentally as well as physically prepared for the task of parenting. The maternal and child program is designed to meet these needs for low-income women through prenatal care, nutritional counseling, WIC program, and transportation to one of our three clinics. If you have need of our services, visit one of our clinics or call Etowah Quality of Life Council, 546-4606 or 492. At Professional Opticians, your comfort and personal satisfaction are very important. We offer a wide selection of frames to fit every need and every budget. Professional Opticians uses only first quality lenses, and our lens fabricating laboratory ensures the finest quality. Our technicians work hard to make sure your glasses are exactly what the doctor ordered. With something as important as your eyesight, you deserve the very best. You can trust the professionals at Professional Opticians. Terrence Taylor was the injured player. He's okay. Just the breath knocked out of him, I believe. Lee showing their formation of the wing tee. And he's not going to go anywhere. Buddy Davis was the ball carrier. Great defense that time by number 16, Marcellus Mostella. Also, Jamie Hawkins helping out on that play. That's the play that's been giving them trouble, that little inside trap. They've been overrunning that. That's been letting the running back get into defensive secondary without anyone realizing it. Much better defense that time. Murray, Davis, and Beasley in the backfield. Here's the give to Beasley. He has stood up hard at the 39-yard line. And he's finally brought down after the first hit. This young man runs hard. He's 6'2", about 195, 198 pounds. Runs about a 4'5", 4'4", And he is something that you really wouldn't want to be very enthusiastic about getting in front of. And the Tigers haven't been all night. Third and five, a long five for the Generals. Here's the option left. He's going to keep it, and he's going to go down short of the first down. Brought down by Terrence Taylor. And number 35, we'll call it Williams. Good play that time by Taylor. He was able to come off the block of number 55, Jay Huggins, fight to the outside and wrap up the quarterback before he made first down yardage. Tigers will take a timeout and talk it over, so we will too. One, and why not? The generals haven't been stopped all night. Beasley is the tailback right behind Basmore. Checking off. Good play for the Tigers. They're going to pick it up and recover at the 48 yard line. Great defensive play that time by number eight, Fred Wright. Basmore came up to the line of scrimmage. They were a strong formation to the right. All the Tigers were shifted that way. He checked off to an option to the left side. Same situation the Gadsden was in. If he completes that flat over there, that's six points for the Generals. Big defensive play that time by number eight, Fred Wright. Going on, uh, on the same hand, if Fred Wright can catch that ball, he's off the races also. And the Tigers could have used a shot in the arm here. Turnover certainly what they need. Bo Dill, the quarterback. The Tigers on march at the 47-yard line. Here's the give to Williams. There's a flag on the play. Not much room there up to the 49-yard line. Gaston had two men in motion that time. Swafford stood up while Williams was coming in motion. You cannot do that, have two men in motion at one time. <laughs> New lot look that time also on offense, Mark. And number 87, Shane Watts that time, split out in a wing position along with Swafford. Well, I got to tell you, the Tigers picked up close to two yards on the play, and the Generals refused the penalty. Very confident. They take it down, obviously, that's echoing my thoughts. Confidence in that defense. 
Bodil, the quarterback. Swafford's in motion. There's the option left. Nothing there, really. Swafford finally gets the ball, looking to try to get outside. He fumbles it. I hope the ball got out of bounds. The generals recovered it, but maybe they were out of bounds. They're going to keep possession and give it to the Tigers. Well, the Tigers could ill afford another big turnover. But he actually picked up about five yards on the fumble. Great example there of how to defense the option. Bodil come down the line. The Indian linebacker were there to meet him. He had great containment by the cornerback. There was nothing there at all. And you're absolutely right. The Tigers are fortunate that the fumble went forward and got out of bounds. Third and four for the Tigers. Tigers need to pick up a first down here and keep this drive alive. They need seven before halftime. Shane Simpson, the ball carrier, he's not going to get it. Two yards on the pickup at most. I'm guessing I got to go for it right here, Mark. I'm at midfield. My defense is playing hard. It looks like they're going to punt, though. I totally agree with you. Of course, you don't want to get down four touchdowns, but not a whole lot of difference between three and four at this not point. Not at this point. You got to have points, I feel, before halftime. This may be their last shot. Shane Watts pushes it downfield. Ball's going to hit around the 15 and bounce out of bounds at about the 12 yard line. So the Generals will be backed up, but the Tigers missed a little opportunity there. And with 3.10 left in the first quarter, they find themselves down 21 to nothing. Back to live action now. The Generals with the possession. Give was right up the middle to Beasley, and he twist and turn and still picked up a couple. Let us take this opportunity to thank our sponsors who make all this possible. Of course, Hicks TV, Jimmy Hicks over there, and Steve Benson keep all of our equipment running. Quality of Life Council, Alabama Contractors, Professional Opticians, J.C. Garcia's and those great baby back ribs. You got to get by and try that new item. Rattled by Rita and Tuxedo Inn. Thanks to all of our sponsors. There's a fumble on the play. I think the Tigers did. They picked it up. The Tigers are going to pick it up at the 18-yard line. And just when we were moaning a bit about the Tigers' decision not to go for it on fourth, maybe it's going to pay off a little bit for the Tigers. I guess that goes to show uh, you and I are up here in the booth and not down there on the sidelines because they got just what the doctor ordered right there. Turnover deep in the general's territory. They need to get in the end zone right here and make this a ball game. Well, they gained about 30 yards on that turnover. Tigers in an eye formation, and I believe that's a good idea. Here's Williams, the ball carrier. He runs hard and bounds his way up to about the 13-yard line, and there's a flag on the play. Usually where a holding penalty is called. And I believe the holding occurred away from the ball to the far left, unnecessary holding that time, and came at a very bad time for the Tigers. Mm. Brought on, I feel, but once again, by the quickness and the great pursuit of this general defense. They're just so quick flying to the ball. They can get out of your reach, and it's very easy just to reach and grab someone by instinct as they're running away from you. I got to tell you now, I'm, I'm looking to throw this ball short and sweet. First down and a long way to go. You got 146 left to go here in the half, and you find yourself on the 28 yard line of the generals. We'll see what the Tigers elect to do. Shane Watt split right. Swafford in motion right. They are going to put it up. Looking for Watts. He has Swafford deep. Touchdown, Tigers! Tigers strike. Touchdown, Andy Swafford. Let's look at it again. Just a jet pitch and mark. We need to put the ball in the air. Swafford from his wing back position. Comes in motion across the formation. Just runs a basic up route. Chuck Robinson just floated the ball up in the air and able to run over it. Huge touchdown for the Tigers. 
Discovered that all you really need in life is just a little more. <laughs> Discover the performance and handling of the all new 1993 Toyota Corolla and discover Corolla again. Etowah Quality of Life Council is here for you with the newly developed maternal and child health program. In many cases of unplanned pregnancies, expectant mothers have to be mentally as well as physically prepared for the task of parenting. The maternal and child program is designed to meet these needs for low-income women through prenatal care, nutritional counseling, WIC program, and transportation to one of our three clinics. If you have need of our services, visit one of our clinics or call Etowah Quality of Life Council, 546-4606 or 492. Tigers holding up here. It's very important with 129 here that they don't give the generals a big run back. And we talked about how they are grading the kicking game. They've got to have good coverage here, Mark. They've got to stay in their lanes. They've got to break down, not overrun this lead general ball. As we mentioned, Lee puts a great emphasis on the kicking game, and it's already shown and paid off. Miller, number 20, will be back deep for the Generals. Big number 22, Buddy Davis. He'll stand it around the 10. And, Terry, we should be looking at a 7-7 ball game here. It shouldn't be 21-7. Look for Gaston to poops this ball high. Try to angle it towards the sideline. John Giles does just that. We'll see if it gets out of bounds. Takes a funny hop. He touches it. It's going to stay inbounds. Tries to cut back to Fox Field and drop down at the 13-yard line. Well, yeah. Excuse me, Mark. They executed just like we talked about in the break. They were able to stay in their lanes. Good pursuit. As he turned it upfield, they were able to nail it. It is easy to see, though, why the Generals are successful in running the punts and kickoffs back. They're laying a lot of bodies on the ground out there. They do a great job of blocking. They return men, don't panic as the ball gets to them. If they do drop it, just a well-coached football team. 115 left to go in the half. General took possession. Beasley has nowhere to go. And maybe the momentum has swung. Maybe not, not enough time to get the ball back, but sure don't want to give up another point on the board this half. If nothing else, it's brought this crowd back in the ball game. This crowd is large enough. They can be a factor in this ball game. They've been quiet for almost the whole first half. That turnover and touchdown has brought them back to life. I want to go back to that turnover and compliment number 50, Tyrone Brasher, who calls that fumble earlier. He's enthusiastic out there, trying to get something going. A lot of room on the right side. I see a flag on the play. Could be another holding. Hopefully a holding on the Generals. Mason Miller was able to pick up the first down, but we'll see if they're going to bring it back. Tommy Gargas on the stop. This is big in two regards, Mark. Number one, the biggest thing it did, it stopped the clock. And that's in the Tigers' favor. I think they have two timeouts left. If they can back them up, if this penalty is against them, stop them, call a quick timeout, force a punt, you never know what might happen then. Tigers are certainly good position to get the ball back again, maybe with a pass or two, being a field goal position, and those three points can be vital. They've got to utilize their timeouts, though. As soon as that, the ball carrier is down, they've got to get a timeout to have any chance at all. How many times do you see a defense stand around for three or four seconds and waste it? We'll see what the Tigers do here. Miller and Beasley against them. Miller and he's hit behind the line. It's Buddy Davis. The Tigers have still not called timeout. The clock is still ticking. 14, 13 seconds. Now they call a timeout and carry it. That's just what we talked about they did not want to do. 
Mark, that's not really the fault of those young men out there. They get caught up in the excitement of the game. They great stop that time. They had him down. They were all celebrating the big defensive play. We're not realizing that what they needed to do was call the timeout. The coaching staff was going absolutely bananas over here. Now Lee can down the ball and not have to have another snap. Ten seconds ticked off the clock. We're down to nine seconds left here in the first half. And the momentum has clearly swung. This Tiger defense has rose to the occasion. They've been put in a hole tonight a couple of times. And as you said, this really should be a 7-7 ball game. Two fluke plays have made it to 14-point lead. But you got to commend the Tiger defense on the way they played this first half. I think the Tiger defense has to learn that it can play with the general offense, and I believe they're finding that out right now. They're not a bad defensive ball club at all. Not at all. They're ranked number four in the state in 5A and points allowed at 5.8 a game, which is outstanding. for over 20 years. Tuxedo Inn, Gadsden and Etowah County's only complete in-stock formal wear service. Tuxedo Inn, featuring over 12,000 in-stock tuxedos with over 80 styles by famous designers like Pierre Cardin, Lord West, and After Six. Tuxedo Inn offers the groom's tuxedo rental absolutely free with five or more in the wedding party. Tuxedo Inn, 1501 Rainbow Drive, across from Days Inn. Tuxedo Inn, open nights till 8. If you haven't been to J.C. Garcia's lately, you're in for a treat. That's because J.C. Garcia's has worked hard to improve their products to make sure you won't be disappointed. Responding to your requests, J.C. Garcia's has added new menu items. And if that isn't enough, just wait until you dig into J.C. Garcia's specialty, baby back ribs. They've got it all together for you. Now all you have to do is go to J.C. Garcia's, 1504 Rainbow Drive, Six to nine months to earn your diploma from a nationally accredited college. New World College in Anniston and Gadsden trains people just like you for new and exciting careers in business computer operations, medical office assistant, and cosmetology. New World College offers day and evening classes, job placement, on-the-job training, and financial aid. Call and register now. A new career and a new life begins at New World College, Anniston and Gadsden. Fred! This house is getting too small. Yep. We could spruce it up a bit, though. I could add on a room or two. Well, where would I get the tools? Rents. Those rental store tools help us save a bunch of money. Help us fix the place up real nice. Yep. Bridals by Rita is known for their beautiful bridal and formal gowns. Flowers by Rita specializes in beautiful rose arrangements, fresh cut flowers, and funeral sprays. Plus the best selection of balloons, candy, and mugs for all occasions, including over the hill items. Citywide deliveries daily to hospitals and funeral homes. Rita and Ted's newest edition, One Hour Express Photo, offers the finest quality professional photo developing at the lowest prices in town. Same day service if in by noon on professional 120 film developed, 35 millimeter black and white and color slides developed and mounted. You'll find it all on the corner of 5th and Broad in downtown Gadsden.
possession or, or defensive possession for the Tigers. This is another one. Coaches emphasize the first drive of each half, especially this third quarter. The Tigers had the momentum going into the locker room at halftime. It'd be interesting to see if their defense can carry it over, get this crowd back inside and get them back in the ball game. Beasley and Davis on the backs, the gives to Davis, and he's gonna be caught by the number students and finally brought down by the Tigers all the way back to the 21 yard line. Just what we've just gotten out of our mouth there, Mark. The defense needed to pick up with the momentum they had. Number 50, Tyrone Brasher with another good play on defense. Good penetration, forced the running back deep. Number 19, Barry Buford was able to finish him off for a big loss. Well, the feeling at halftime around all in the stands was if we can hold them in the first possession, we think we'll have a ball game. That may be very well true. There's the fake to Davis. Baskerville keeps the ball, goes up to about the 23 yard line before he's brought down. Good thing the number eight, Fred Wright, was able to converge on Basmore in a hurry. He had Beasley the trailing for the pitch man. He was able to get the ball to him. He'd been off to the races that time. Brings up a third and long. We'll call it 19 yards for the generals. Look for them to put it up in the air. They'll send all the backs out of that backfield. There goes Beasley. All of them around. Here come the Tigers. Putting pressure. A man over the middle with the ball's incomplete. Oh, that was close. And there's the flag. What a late flag. Oh, you can't claw, you can't throw that flag that late. I don't dispute the call, Mark, but there was an official standing right there beside him, made no effort at all to throw this flag. The umpire, a good 10 to 15 yards away, threw that flag. I'm not saying it was not the proper call, it just was not his call to make. I think you and I both thought there was interference before the ball actually got there, but then the fans reacted, and then you saw the flag come out of the pocket. That's not the time to call that. No. That's an automatic first down for the Generals and a big play for the Generals. Ten fifteen to go in the third quarter, early here in the third quarter. Tigers in that 5-3. Basmore looking to put it up quick. He has a man out there along the side up to about the 20-yard line. Number nine, Byron McQueen, the speedster. Good pass and catch that time by Basmore McQueen. D.J. Davis had good coverage. He slipped down that time. Enabled McQueen to turn, pick up additional yardage that time. You mentioned that this was not a one-dimensional attack by the Generals. Just to give you a, a little information, Basmore's completed 53% of his passes this year. Four TDs, only one interception. So he can throw the ball. Generals getting set, strong side left. There's the give to Beasley right up the middle. And he bulls his way up for about four yards and across and into Gaston High territory. The generals have good success tonight. Lining it tied up into one side of the field, then before the snap of the ball, switching the strength of their line with him over to the other side. A lot of times they've caught the Tigers not making the same adjustment. Beasley's, has been able, Beasley's been able to run back against the weakness of the Tigers defense. Davis and Beasley, now Murray goes back into the backfield. The gift to Beasley, though, right up the middle. No, Basmore keeps it around right in. Has a little room, twist and turn, and he's finally knocked down at the 37-yard line. Good play fake that time by Jeff Basmore, the quarterback. Just what we talked about. They're lining the tight up in on one side of the field, bring him over to the other side of the field, just flip-flopping the strength of their line, run the option into the short side of the field, and we saw how Basmore was the backup tailback that time, Mark. Great run. That gives the generals the first down. Clock counting at 9.09 here in the third quarter. Generals still on the move. Tigers need to regain that momentum that they had. He gives to Beasley right up the middle, and he bulls ahead for about three or four before he is finally just halted. Does not go down. He's a big boy. He's 
an outstanding football player. He runs hard on every play. Good stop that time, number 40, Cedric Watson. Was able to stop his momentum after a gain of about six or seven yards that time. A lot of arm tackling early, but the Tigers have gone ahead in the second quarter, now the third, and they're starting to wrap him up a little better. Beasley and Murray, there's the fake to Beasley. Has a man again outside, it's McQueen. He's close to the first down, I think gonna be a little bit short. We'll have to see where they mark it. Appears he's going to be about a yard or two short. Big third down conversion play here for the Tigers on defense. Our executive producer Scott Hutchinson said never a doubt it was short. Brings up third and a short one. Right up the middle, he's got the first down. And the drive continues. Let's take another look at that, Mark. That's going to be close. That is going to be close. <coughs> Good penetration that time by the defensive front of the Tigers. Number 69, Jamie Hawkins. Number 50, Tyrone Brasher were able to submarine in that time and stop Beasley for little if no gain. He picks up about one yard, and that was just good enough for the first down. Tigers needing to dig in desperately here. Needs to stop the Generals on their first possession, especially after they had them stopped from a third and 19, and a pass that, if completed, would still not have been the first down. Murray and Beasley in the backfield. There's the fake to Murray, looking for Beasley, has him across the middle. It's complete and down to the seven yard line. Excellent play that time by the Generals. He faked to Beasley on the counter play. He run through the Tiger defensive backfield. He's run a little out route. Off the play fake, he was able to find it. Tigers are gonna call a timeout and talk it over. We'll be right back. First down and eight yards to go for the Generals. There's the pitch to Beasley. He fumbles it momentarily, and now he's going to be brought down for no gain on the play. Good stop by time by number 12, Andy Swafford, from his defensive backfield position. He was able to come in, hit Beasley low enough to knock him off his feet. Well, they could use a big turnover here. Beasley was able to pick up the fumble. General still in the drive, enabled by that very late call by Richard Bohannon. Questionable call, kept the drive alive. Bazmore, the quarterback, he's looking to put it up to his tight end. Has him out there, overthrows him. Ball falls incomplete. And that'll bring up a third down situation for the Generals. Number 85, Tyrone Rogers that time. He's a big target mark. He's about 6'5", 6'6". Excellent call. Just a little fade round out there against D.J. Davis, who's maybe 5'10", 5'11", just a little bit overthrown. Rogers is one of those prospects that we talked about earlier. He'll play major college, probably go to a junior college next year. The big tight end blocks very well and can catch the ball up. Beasley and Murray in the backfield. There's the give to Beasley, one man to beat. Brings it down, Andy Swafford. All the way down to the four yard line, though. And the Generals are going to go for three here. So if the Tigers could get away here with only giving up three, that. That is a success in itself. We were burned earlier by a fake field goal. I don't think the generals would do it here, and the Tigers surely would be alert for it this time. Travis Smith looks to kick the field goal. It's up, and it's good. So it's 6.09 left in the third quarter. The generals extend their lead to 24 to 7. If you've discovered there's more to focus on in life than a standard driver's side airbag,
Discover all the safety features available in the all-new 1993 Toyota Corolla. And discover Corolla again. Royce Jones, a chiropractic physician. If you're in pain, I encourage you to call for our free consultation. Helping people is our business. At Professional Opticians, your comfort and personal satisfaction are very important. We offer a wide selection of frames to fit every need and every budget. Professional Opticians uses only first quality lenses, and our lens fabricating laboratory ensures the finest quality. Our technicians work hard to make sure your glasses are exactly what the doctor ordered. With something as important as your eyesight, you deserve the very best. You can trust the professionals at Professional Opticians. At Hicks TV, we stand behind what we sell. We sell and service quality products, including Panasonic. At Hicks TV, we treat our customers with the care and respect you've come to count on. If you're looking for a television, VCR, camcorder, or satellite dish, make Hicks your first stop. We'll make sure you get the best service and Panasonic products for your money. With Hicks and Panasonic, you're the only customer. 927 Megan Boulevard, Gadsden. Chad Blake set to kick it off for the Generals. Swafford is back deep. Good high kick, Swafford to take it at his five yard line. Swafford looking for some room, Hess over the left side, one man to beat. Oh, and he's brought down to the 37-yard line. Good run by Andy Swafford. We have an injured player on the field. We'll check the injury and we'll be right back. now getting the ball with 601 left in the third quarter should have had it a lot sooner there's the fake to williams chuck robinson looking to go deep has shoot watch deep oh overthrows him at the 25 yard line shane watts had his man beat well, we saw him open quite a bit in the first half i like the call they have done some different things with shane trying to get him the football he's one of these dozen or so major college prospects that all these recruiters are looking at. They split him out, they put him in the wing tee, they've done a lot of different things trying to get him the football. I like that call right there. He was open, just a little bit overthrown. A well thrown ball though. Gaston again in the wing tee formation. Have not gotten much running the ball tonight. Williams in motion to the right. The fakes to Williams looking to throw it up again. Trying to elude a rush, has a little room, and finally makes it up to the 44-yard line. Good effort by Chuck Robinson. There's a flag on the play. Andy Swafford at number 13. Shane Norton got tied up a little bit that mark. Andy doing some downfield blocking. May have held on to that block a little bit long. I stand corrected. Can you say makeup? Boy. I didn't see what happened with the first of that play, but when we took notice, Andy was holding to his block and took the defender down to the ground, and yet the penalty is called on the generals. We'll see if it can result in some points for the Tigers. Let me go ahead and announce the officials since they seem to be getting a lot of attention here lately. Jack Minshew and Gerald Minshew, Mike Walford, Richard Bohannon, and Todd Ingram. Again, to Swafford right up the middle. No room for Andy. Brought down the 42-yard line. 
too much penetration by the general's defense for that inside handoff to, to be very effective, Mark. They're just caving in the whole offensive line. Play takes too long to develop. All the generals are converging off the mesh point between the quarterback and the wingback. I still like to see a little play action here and, and look for Shane Watts or a back out of the backfield. Bo Hudson out here to the right. Two men come out here for the generals. Wing T, Williams right, Swafford left. Williams is in motion and the gives to Williams going around left end. He beats his man out there on the left end and gets up about five yards on the carry. Up across the 40, he goes out of bounds at around the 37-yard line of the Generals. 4.47 and clock running. Number 63, Derek Sparks at time pulling from his offensive guard position, trying to get out in front of Jimmy, giving some blocking support. Brings up a third and five for the Tigers. Shane Watts is out here to the right. Swafford's in motion. Look for him to put it up in the air. They are mighty quickly. There's Andy Swafford. Can he outrun him? Gets to the outside. He might have picked it up. He does. From the mark, it looks like he picked up the first down. That will move the chain for the Tigers. And just what we were looking for on the play. Another good offensive play by Coach Del Lorenzo and his staff. They had Andy out here in an isolation situation. Was able to get the quick screen to him. Andy, with his outstanding speed, was just able to outrun his blockers, outraced everyone to the sideline for the first down. Shane Simpson, the long back behind Chuck Robinson. Jimmy Williams is out here to the right. He's in motion. There's the fake to Williams. He set a good block, but Chuck Robinson goes down. John Mosley with a great defensive play for the Generals that time. He had Shane Watts, the Tigers did that time, wide open in the middle of the field, but Robinson was not able to see him in time to deliver him the ball. Play will lose five, bring up a second and 15, and again, another situation where you like to see that short pass, maybe seven, 10 yards down the field to pick up a hunk of this and let him run to pick up the first down. He gets to Williams right up the middle. Oh, he had some room. Fifty-six. Adrian Cunningham doing a good bit of blocking right there in the middle, but he might have caught a little portion of Jimmy Williams and brought him down. That was the first time tonight that we've seen the timing on that play the way it needs to be, where they had the pulling tackle coming around, clearing out. They caught him in the proper defense. Jimmy doesn't fall down. He's off to the races there. Third and ten for the Tigers. There's the quick pitch to Williams. Has a little bit of a gap. There's a flag on the play. Maybe another holding. They're going to mark the ball at about the 21-yard line, short of the first down, but it may come back because of the holding call. Talked all night about the quickness and the great pursuit by this lead defensive team. Once again, we see that coming into play with another holding penalty. They just fly to the ball. All 11 guys are flying to the football. I think if the Tigers can stay away from the penalties, they can move this ball on this defense. They've shown they can this quarter and in the second quarter some. up a third and long 20 situation now faced with a similar situation that the generals had earlier Williams in motion left to gives to sense him right up the middle and he's brought down hard number 29 Andre Hall brings Shane Simpson down Tigers need a good punt this time from Shane Simpson to back up Lee maybe their defense can go out there and force a turnover deep in their own end let the Tigers offense convert. It's essential he keeps this ball out of the end zone. Shane Watts stands at the 50. The ball's at the 37. They're not coming. He could take his time. It's an end over end. I hope it doesn't get in the end zone. It hits about the five. 
and it rolls on into the end zone. It's a touchback. So with 1.51 left in the third quarter, it's 24 to seven in the favor of the Generals. Lasmore, the quarterback, split backfield. Fakes to Beasley. Mostello comes down on a couple of Generals to make sure nobody gets any gain. To give was to Mason Miller. A little miscommunication there. Well, once again, we've seen the time of defense rising to the occasion. You know, the score may not indicate it, but they played an outstanding game. They're playing a team that's averaging over 44 points a game on offense. So, as we say, they may be down on the score, but they're playing a good ball game. Timeout for the general, so we'll take one, two, and we'll be right back after this. Beasley, now Murray in the backfield, but gives to Murray. Murray around left end, has some room, runs over, man, up to the 25-yard line. Good block by the pulling guard that time, number 55, Jay Huggins. He was able to kick out Fred Wright that time, enabled Murray to cut inside, pick up good yardage. Samuel Murray, of course, was the starter last year. You know, he went down with an injury. Fred Beasley stepped up and showed what kind of player he is. He has a host of running backs, and we've seen them all tonight. Beasley in motion right. Basmore with a quarterback keeper right up the middle. Saw something there, and he picked up the first down. He must have saw something there when he came to the line. That was a call play. It was a call play. They split out Beasley that time. They had no backs in the backfield, so it's obvious it's either going to be a pass or a some type of quarterback run. Good blocking up front on that quarterback draw. Split formation fake to Beasley. Gives to Davis around right, and he has some room. Oh! And thank goodness he was brought down out there, close to the first down. Number 31, Ted Mitchell brought him down. Might have saved a touchdown. He did save a touchdown. Once again, number 55 for the Generals, Jay Huggins, pulling that time and able to kick out the defensive end, enabling the back to cut up inside. Almost another touchdown there. Ten seconds left to go in the third quarter. Clock's ticking. I don't believe they're going to get it off. So that's going to end the third quarter with the Generals picking up three more points. Tiger defense getting stingy here. 24 to 7 in favor of the Generals. We'll be right back. Etowah Quality of Life Council is here for you with the newly developed maternal and child health program. In many cases of unplanned pregnancies, expectant mothers have to be mentally as well as physically prepared for the task of parenting. The maternal and child program is designed to meet these needs for low-income women through prenatal care and nutritional counseling, WIC program, and transportation to one of our three clinics. If you have need of our services, visit one of our clinics or call Etowah Quality of Life Council, 546-4606 or 492. Brad. This house is getting too small. Yep. We could spruce it up a bit, though. I could add on a room or two. Well, where would I get the tools? Rent. Those rental store tools help us save a bunch of money. Help us fix the place up real nice. Yeah. If you haven't been to J.C. Garcia's lately, you're in for a treat. That's because J.C. Garcia's has worked hard to improve their products to make sure you won't be disappointed. Responding to your requests, J.C. Garcia's has added new menu items. And if that isn't enough, just wait until you dig into J.C. Garcia's specialty, baby back ribs. They've got it all together for you. Now all you have to do is go to J.C. Garcia's, 1504 Rainbow Drive. 
six to nine months to earn your diploma from a nationally accredited college. New World College in Anniston and Gadsden trains people just like you for new and exciting careers in business computer operations, medical office assistant, and cosmetology. New World College offers day and evening classes, job placement, on-the-job training, and financial aid. Call and register now. A new career and a new life begins at New World College, Anniston and Gadsden. Back to live action, set to start it off here in the fourth quarter. The Generals have been held to three points in the last two quarters. A couple of gifts early, but the Generals up 14 to nothing. Then somewhat of a drive they had for the third score. The Tigers have done well since they've settled down since that point. 24 to 7 in favor of the Generals. Here's Beasley with the ball right in the middle. Bounces off left, but not a whole lot of room to run. Still picks up close to five yards. Good stop that time, number 75, Donovan Martin. The Tigers, the Tigers have played hard. As you said, they've only given up three additional points since falling behind. Real early, they played hard. Team formation by the Generals. There's the fake to Beasley. Fastball with the keeper. Good thing he didn't decide to pitch it to number 22, Buddy Davis out there. Davis had nobody in front of him, but Fastmore comes over and tells him, I'm sorry. Generals are doing what they need to do on offense right now. They're controlling the football, moving the change. More importantly, time is ticking off that clock, keeping the ball away from the Tigers. Here's the option right, set pitch to Beasley. There's a flag on the play. Beasley runs hard, runs over to the 30-yard line. The flag was thrown on number 78 for the Generals. That'll be Brian Hill. He might have held his block a little bit too long. I think he got him for blocking below the knees that time. It was a good block. He just hit him a little bit too low. Good break for the Tigers. Stops a little momentum. He's going to back the ball back in general territory all the way to the 43-yard line of the Generals. opportunity the Tiger defense needs right here. They've got to stop them when they got them in long yardage situations. They've got to hold them back on their side of the 50. That's the quick hit again to McQueen out here on the right. Gets across the 50-yard line. And if you don't come up quick on that play, you're not going to stop it. They're showing why they're the number one team in the nation. They're a very well coached football team on both sides of the ball. Their offense is very diversified. They're not strictly a running team or a passing team. They've got all the weapons, kicking game included. Beasley falls forward. It has to be a flag on that play. Yeah, they finally throw it. I don't know if he just lost his balance or... There's no way he could have been expecting the play to start that soon, but it is motion. And they'll back it up again five more yards. But the only mistakes the generals have made tonight have been the illegal procedure penalties. They've had several of those tonight. It appears that they're wanting to go on the first sound of the quarterback. They're going up and all this crowd noise. They're hearing some calls moving before the quarterback actually calls the signals. Second and 17. Murray and Beasley down the backfield. There's the give to Murray around left end. Cuts back across the little room. Gets back close to the original line of scrimmage up to the 46-yard line of the Tigers. We talked about the Generals not having a huge football team, but they are big enough. And those backs, some of those backs are as big as some of other high school's linemen. The 
Back size-wise for Lee can line up with any school in the SEC right now. Size-wise play. Betty Davis Murray in beats the Wayne T. There's the fake to Murray. Passmore with a little pitch up to Davis. He has some room trying to cut to the outside. He does. He gets down close to the 20-yard line before going out of bounds. Excellent call that time by the offensive staff of the league. They had Davis out here on the right wing. Basmore went back on play action. Davis cut back across the grain. A little whoopee or Utah pass. It's called several things. That play, though, was actually made by number 20, Mason Miller. He was downfield blocking after the pass and able to big game to be chief for the Lee offense. We've got a timeout on the field with 946. We'll be right back. At Hicks TV, we stand behind what we sell. We sell and service quality products, including Panasonic. At Hicks TV, we treat our customers with the care and respect you've come to count on. If you're looking for a television, VCR, camcorder, or satellite dish, make Hicks your first stop. We'll make sure you get the best service and Panasonic products for your money. With Hicks and Panasonic, you're the only customer. 927 Megan Boulevard, Gadsden. Tuxedo Inn, your formal wear leader and wedding specialist for over 20 years. Tuxedo Inn, Gadsden and Etowah County's only complete in-stock formal wear service. Tuxedo Inn, featuring over 12,000 in-stock tuxedos with over 80 styles by famous designers like Pierre Cardin, Lord West, and After Six. Tuxedo Inn offers the groom's tuxedo rental absolutely free with five or more in the wedding party. Tuxedo Inn, 1501 Rainbow Drive, across from Days Inn. Tuxedo Inn, open nights till 8. Let's take this opportunity to thank our sponsors again, professional opticians, Alabama contractors, quality of life, Jimmy Hicks over at Hicks TV, J.C. Garcia's, get by and check out those great new items, baby back ribs, right on by Rita and tucks it in, our sponsors, we thank you. Basmore, the quarterback, split backfield. The thanks to Beasley, the gift to Murray around the right side. Got a lot of room looking to get in. Gets down close, goes out of bounds on the two yard line of the Tigers. Good speed shot that time by number 20. Excuse me, that was Murray on the carry that time. Good speed from his half-back position. That would outrun the pursuit from the Tigers. Almost made it into the corner of the end zone. Ball's placed down the two-yard line of the Tigers. Gives to Beasley right up the middle, and he gets in there for the score. Four left in the fourth quarter. The Generals extend their lead. It's now 30 to 7. And this big crowd is starting to disperse a little bit. Like a fire alarm went off in the stands right now. The mass exit is taking place here. Travis Smith looks to add a point. He does, and it's good. So that'll make it 31 to 7 with 9.34 left. We'll be back with the kickoff. 50 kick it away for the Generals. Going to kick it to number 12, Andy Schwaber. Andy had a little room last time and picked up a big run back. Takes it at his own five yard line. Right the middle now swings to the outside and up to the 25 yard line. Score really not indicative of the game that we've seen tonight. The Tigers have played a very tough ball game, especially in the last three quarters. We talked about earlier in the first half, two plays really being the difference of a 21-7 ball game and a 7-7 ball game. 
me, obviously, is a great football team, one of the best high school football teams I've had the privilege of seeing. As we've stated many times, you can certainly see why they're ranked number one in the nation. Chuck Robinson, the quarterback now for the Tigers. Swafford's in motion. I think we're going to see some passing here. Throws it over the defensive ends to Shane Sensum, and Shane barely gets back to the line of scrimmage before he is nailed down hard. Tigers have to put the ball up in the air. I think it's important to remember, though, that this is a 5A versus 6A matchup. Tigers, nothing to be ashamed of. They have to look next week where they'll face a tough Etowah Blue Devil team. Sheer numbers come into effect. Lee of Montgomery is one of the largest high schools in the state of Alabama. And you can look on their sideline and see they must have brought 75 or 80 players to this game. There's the pitch to Swafford. Looking for a block, can't quite get one. He's collared down at the 27 yard line. Jimmy Williams could have given him a block, but if he had him, it had been a clipping call. Actually, a good play on Jimmy's part that time. Good heads up play, not to go ahead and do what your instincts tell you, and that would have been blocked the man. He had Jeremy Brown with his back square to him. That would have been a clear clipping if he would have blocked him then. Tigers have not had the ball much here in the second half. Of course, the general's first drive was kept alive by that late call that ate up a good portion of the clock, and even though there was a makeup call for the Tigers later, the damage had been done. A lot of time eaten up on the clock by the generals this half. Chuck Robinson look again to Williams across the middle. He slips and falls up to the 32. Would have been close to a first down, but he falls short. Down 31 to seven. I don't know what you do at this point, Terry. I think you go ahead and punt the ball away. I I might even think about giving some of my younger kids a chance to play in this type of atmosphere. It's not many times in a high school player's career he gets to play in front of this many people. And it'd be certainly good if we can see some of the younger players on both sides of the ball get in and play. Shane Watts looks to punt. Great punt by Shane. Backs his man all the way back to the 25 yard line. And he's met by a host of tacklers. Rex Keeling congratulating Shane on that fine punt that time. We've talked about Lee's kicking game against and also under the guidance of Coach Rex Keeling has an excellent kicking game. We have a couple of guys that are very proficient with the field goals. We've seen two different punters tonight, Andy Swafford and Shane Watts, both doing a very good job. across the left side to Murray, who gets up close to the 29, 30 yard line. And Lee, for the first time this year, has elected to play at starters most of the game. You were looking at a 24 to seven ball game and the Tigers driving. The drive was halted by a penalty call. 24 to 14 sounds a lot better than 31 to seven. Tigers still look strong in area play, and they will again themselves find themselves in the state playoffs this year. Gives right up the middle to Beasley. He's running hard, trying to take men. Eminem tries to come over the top to help bring him down. Beasley's all the way up to the 47-yard line of and gets the first down. Andrew Beasley certainly lived up to all of his advance billing. That particular play, four Tigers met him. He drug them a good 10 to 12 yards before they were able to get him to the ground. One of the hardest running offensive backs we've seen this year, Mark. You know, even though the Tigers have not had a whole lot of success throwing the ball thus far this year, they looked a little better tonight, and I think that's one thing they've got to carry on with them throughout the season to be successful. 25s in the game for the Generals. That's Selleck Johnson. He runs the ball to the left side. Doesn't pick up much. 
Good defensive stop by number 64, Tommy Gargas. Five sixteen left to go in the game. Generals looking at a second and ten. Looking to put it up quick. Has McQueen out here once again on that quick hit. All the way out to the 43-yard line before he slips and falls. Once again, Bassmore is right on the target. They've run that play about six times tonight. Completed it about every time for good yardage. We talked to the league coaches, and you can see by the statistics that even though Basmore had completed a high percentage, he didn't throw a whole lot. They have really put the ball up in the air tonight. As we stated earlier, they're averaging over 44 points a game, but only 14 points have they scored in the fourth quarter all year. Chris Mosley, now the quarterback for the Generals, directing the offense. Ball's put down close to the 40-yard line of the Tigers. 4.52 remaining here in the game. The main reason they've only scored 14 points in the fourth quarter is that they've blown out all their opposition by the first half, and none of the starters are playing because of the fourth quarter. I would venture to say this is the first fourth quarter action that the starters have seen on offense and defense for me this year. Gets right up the middle to Davis. Davis still in the game. Puts the ball up close to the 25-yard line of the Tigers. He picks up some more big yardage, and they continue to eat up that clock. Lee's offensive line has done just an outstanding job tonight. We've talked about number 55, Jay Huggins. Number 78, Brian Hill has had a great game. Number 75, Jason Lindsby has also played a big part. Chris Mosley fumbles the snap, falls on it. It's a loss of one on the play. And so as the clock continues to run under four minutes now, the Tigers playing for a lot of pride. A great crowd on hand. I hope this crowd will follow this team over to Atala next week. Well, the Tigers will take on the Blue Devils. There's Davis again. This time he has thrown up and stopped. There's a flight flag on the play. They may call a personal foul. We'll see. Here. That's what they're going to call. That's an unnecessary even a call at this point. You hate to see team lose their composure. You had hoped that the Tigers would be able to can keep their composure. They're seeing their 18-game winning streak go up before their eyes tonight, but we certainly feel they don't have anything to be ashamed of, this Lee football team. I don't see anybody in the state beating them. Gaston calls a timeout. We'll be right back. Bridals by Rita is known for their beautiful bridal and formal gowns. Flowers by Rita specializes in beautiful rose arrangements, fresh cut flowers, and funeral sprays. Plus the best selection of balloons, candy, and mugs for all occasions, including over the hill items. Citywide deliveries daily to hospitals and funeral homes. Rita and Ted's newest edition, One Hour Express Photo, offers the finest quality professional photo developing at the lowest prices in town. Same day service if in by noon on professional 120 film developed, 35 millimeter black and white and color slides developed and mounted. You'll find it all on the corner of 5th and Broad in downtown Gadsden. Dr. Royce Jones, a chiropractic physician, 
If you're in pain, I encourage you to call for our free consultation. Helping people is our business. Split back bill for the generals, Mosley, Fakes, and now Gibbs. To number 33, Level Brooks. Gets it across the 10 yard line. Close to three minutes now. As a coach, you'd hate to see another score here by the Generals. That score would really not be indicative of this game. Now, the Tigers need to go ahead and show up that defense, keep them out of the end zone. Davis right up the middle, fighting, 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 and he's in. Touchdown, Generals. As they've done all night long, the tandem of number 22, Buddy Davis, and number 23, Fred Beasley. Good yardage up the middle. Good hard running that time by Davis. He was met by several Tigers about the five-yard line. Drug every one of them into the end zone for a touchdown. Chad Blake looking to make it 38 to seven. Just gets it in the left up right. 2.48 on the clock. And the Generals leading 38 to 7. And Terry, the Tigers have to look ahead to next week. And all they can do is take a Chad Blake kicks it off to the Keith Williams. Who picks it up at his 10, 15, now up close to the 20 yard line. And what can the Tigers look to gain out of this defeat tonight? Well, you would hope they would, and certainly the coaching staff will find something positive out of this game. They've got, in my opinion, a bigger game next week, an area game with Etowal. Etowal's going to come into the game undefeated and probably rank number one in the state, 5A. They've got to go to Glover Field, Metalla, always a tough place to play. It'll be interesting to see how the Tigers bounce back from this crushing defeat. We thought we saw a pretty good passing attack tonight by the Generals. Boy, just wait till next week. Shane Simpson right up the middle. Some big yardage. Here they go. Only one man to outrun. He's going to be brought down at about the 15-10 yard line. Shane Simpson right up the middle with the flag on the play. Got holding on the Tigers, I'm afraid, and that play's going to be rolled back. Sort of indicative of the kind of night it's been for the Tigers thus far. Some confusion among the officials, as has been all night. Now they're going to wave it off. Uh, uh, I need. Uh, What do you say? It's been a night where you've noticed the officials and you'd like not to have that a big game like this. Obviously, that call there has no effect on the outcome of the game. you got to wonder when that might come into play sometime later on down the road. You're looking at a 38-7 score, and it sounds funny to complain a little bit about officiating, but... Uh, we have a timeout, they've got that right. With two minutes left to go, we'll be right back. Bo Dillon at quarterback. Tigers looking to get some points on here before it's over with. Bo Dillon's got a couple men in the end zone. Shows to Shane White. Oh, in and out of the hand of Shane. Right at the goal line. Good throw that time by Bo. Good route, good everything, except for catch. Tough luck, Shane didn't drop many. You look at the Tiger, uh, this Tiger team, replacing a lot of men off that state championship team last year. He'd like to have a season where you can ease through and let the guys grow up and get better and better each week. It's tough to do against the, their opponents that they've had this year. We'll talk more about that in just a minute. Bears to give the Williams right up the middle. Bust through to about the five yard line. I 
know you've had conversations with Coach Del Lorenzo about this very fact, but the Tigers only have eight games this year on their schedule. I think it's a direct result of the success they've had over the past two or three years. They're just having a hard time finding people to play them. Lee of Montgomery's the same way. Of the Tigers' eight games this year, two of them are from 6A schools, one from Tuscaloosa County, the other from Lee. And Lee itself has had to find itself on the road quite a bit, traveling to a variety of places in Georgia and Mississippi just to get enough games to fill out their schedule. Swafford made the catch, hesitated just a moment. They were able to bring him down to the three-yard line. Clock now has ticked under one minute. Fourth down for the Tigers. Deal in at quarterback. Swafford coming to the side now. Jimmy Williams and Shane Simpson. Been a strong eye right. It's fourth and two. The give to Williams. He's hit. It's worked in there for the touchdown. Touchdown Tigers. Excellent run that time by Jimmy. Was hit in the backfield. Was able to spin off, keep his momentum in his shoulder square, get into the end zone for the Tigers. Comes up limping just a little bit on that play. That would certainly be a big blow if he re-enters that ankle. John Giles, set for the point after, just gets it above the outstretched hands of the Generals. And with 28 seconds, draws the Tigers a little closer. It's 38 to 14. John Giles set to kick the onside kick. There's the kick. The Generals come up and field it at the 53. They'll take over there. They'll take over with 10 seconds to go now. They're going to run out the clock. I think the main concern has to be with Jimmy Williams, trainer MB Hoop, talking to him. He'll try to get him well for next week's game. But for tonight, the long-expected matchup is going to look at the expectations. The Generals win it. 
The Cable Advantage Video Classifieds presents what's happening around town, a complete look at what's going on around Gadsden and surrounding communities.